Later on the Tonight Show, Jay gets all bouncy with Ben Affleck. And Rodney Dangerfield. And there's music by P.O.D. Your local news is next. Seaside police search for the identity of an unknown woman. George W. Bush inches closer to the White House, but lawyers say not so fast. And a dire warning about the health of the Willamette River. The news is next. From KGW, where the news comes first. This is Northwest News Channel 8 at 11. A woman walks into a seaside hotel wondering who she is and how she got there. Now police are looking for help finding her identity. And it is our top story. Hello, I'm Joe Donnelly. Hello, I'm Laurel Porter. A woman who's apparently come down with a case of amnesia needs your help tonight. Police in Seaside are calling on the public to help identify the woman. She talked with News Channel 8's Steve Jefferson tonight. And Steve, any word on what triggered her amnesia? Not so far, but Seaside police are counting on publicity about her case to answer that question. Now, the woman hopes her family and friends are watching tonight and that somebody will tell her who she is. The last thing this woman remembers is walking down a dark street and coming to a hotel in Seaside. Kind of rang a bell, like a picture postcard. I, I knew that I was in Seaside and uh, went in and asked the clerk to please call the police for me. She asked us to call her Sue. After a night in the hospital, Sue is staying here at a woman's shelter. Not knowing who she is or where she's from has been an emotional roller coaster. I want to cry all the time, and I'm stopping myself from doing that. I haven't been able to sleep. Sue does have some recall, but only about big current events, like who's president of the United States and musical legends like the Beatles. But ask her some personal questions. I, I, I don't know anything personal at all, but I have a ring on. Please help Sue's wedding ring, her keys with an army website logo strap, so and questions. clues like smoking, but and what appears to be a birthmark under her left eye will help someone identify her. Sue says until that happens, she's trying to be as brave as possible. A lot of that fear has gone, gone away. Now, Sue hopes a lot of rest will help her memory kick in. She somewhat recognizes the seaside area, but still can't recall where she lives. Now, if you believe you can help, please contact the Seaside Police Department. Laurel? Thank you, Steve. It's the first of the season in Washington State. A flu outbreak has hit a Vancouver nursing home. Since Saturday, four residents and employees at Pacific Specialty have been diagnosed with type A flu. Others at the nursing home are showing symptoms as well. And until the virus is controlled, administrators say they will not allow visitors or new move-ins. The nursing home is waiting to see if other residents will come down with the flu. And after the final diagnosis, employees say they'll wait four days before reopening that home to visitors. In the unsettled presidential election now, most eyes turn to Florida Supreme Court. Justices are about to consider Al Gore's appeal. His claim, he deserves one last recount. And now, another case worth following. News Channel 8's Mark Strassman has the latest from Tallahassee. In light of the... Legislative intent in the so-called Seminole County case, a suit brought not by Al Gore, but a Democratic voter. Allegations about thousands of absentee ballots, Republican workers, and added ID numbers. They were put in a room with lots of ballot materials and told, go ahead and do whatever you want to do with regard to altering these absentee ballot applications. Throw out all of Seminole County's 15,000 absentee ballots, as Jacobs wants, and George Bush loses Florida. You may punish the supervisor. You may make a determination that that was a bad thing, but you do not punish the voter. His motions to dismiss denied. Trial starts tomorrow. To Al Gore, legal defeats mounting, time elapsing. Seminole County's case may prove the sleeper. I do think that it's likely that all of the current controversies will end up uh, being resolved one way or another in the Florida Supreme Court. If that includes Seminole County, pushing this case all the way to Florida's high court likely would prolong this stalemate by days. I think that this is his last best chance to salvage the election. Court's in recess. And the Seminole County case 
one of 44 lawsuits still active, looking to chew into Florida's final numbers. By December 12th, Florida, like every state, needs to pick its electoral delegates. That date was once also seen as a hard deadline for Gore. No more. Mark Strassman, NBC News, Tallahassee. George W. Bush told reporters today in light of yesterday's court rulings, he may soon announce his choice for certain cabinet posts. It was the first day on the job for Washington State's U.S. Senator-elect Maria Cantwell. Cantwell made her debut appearance on Capitol Hill today, walking into the Democratic caucus alongside another newcomer, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Cantwell's win means the next Senate will probably be evenly split between the parties. That would be the first time in 120 years, that is, if Joseph Lieberman, in fact, does return to the Senate. Cantwell takes office on January 3rd. Another tennis ball bomb to tell you about. This one in Battleground. A woman found it in her kitchen. She picked it up and took it to the police department. And officers were stunned. They immediately put it on the sidewalk, evacuated the neighborhood, and called in the Portland bomb, bomb squad. squad. Indicated to the sergeant at the scene that it was extremely dangerous and they didn't want to transport it. So based on that, tells me it was a pretty nasty piece of equipment. The bomb squad detonated it in a field behind the department. Battleground police are talking with the woman, also her family and her family friends. They say it's too early to tell whether this is related to last week's tennis ball bomb that killed a dog in East Moreland. Salem police say they've found the man who used a flashing blue light to try to pull over a 17-year-old girl last week. The girl escaped by driving onto the freeway after the man pulled alongside of her car. Police say the man lives near Eugene, and that's where he rented the tan Nissan Altima. Detectives say they will interview the man this week, then decide exactly what charges to file against him. Police need your help in catching a con artist. The man used a fake ID to steal $1,500 from a Portland teenager's bank account. These are bank photos snapped from cameras in the southeast Vancouver, Washington Mutual. That's where the crime happened. Vancouver police hope someone knows who this man is so they can stop him before he strikes again. Hope springs eternal. If we can, <laughs> if we can get somebody just to give us that phone call that says they know who that person is, then we're well on our way. If you have information on this crime, call Vancouver Police Detectives at 360-696-8589. Police also announced the arrest of a Vancouver woman, LaVon Gatewood Scott. She's believed to be the ringleader in a massive identity theft case. That fraud ring involves 17 people and includes more than $140,000 in losses. The city of Salem says it will not try to stop Measure 7. That measure provides payment to private landowners if land use laws reduce their property values. The city council voted not to join the lawsuits in Portland and Eugene trying to stop the measure. Instead, the city approved a process for people to make claims using Measure 7. Folks still have to prove that their property has gone down in value due to city action, but it keeps it out of the courts. The, the message has been sent to us that we need to re really be careful of the decisions that we make when it comes to people's uh, you know, property. Tomorrow we are expecting Marion County Circuit Court Judge Paul Lipscomb to rule on a lawsuit seeking a stay on Measure 7 that's supposed to take effect on Thursday. And that's also the day Attorney General Hardy Myers will release his opinion of what Measure 7 really means to state and local governments. Scientists tonight issue a rare and dire warning about the health of the Willamette River. The alert, out late this afternoon, confirms the presence of cancer-causing fish along a very popular section of the river. News Channel 8's John Becker joins us now with more on the story and the fallout, too, John. Yeah, Joe, just last week, a section of the Willamette River downtown officially declared a Superfund site because it's in such bad health. Excuse me. Now, for only the second time in several years, scientists warning fishermen just downriver from here to avoid eating the fish they catch. Slap it up here. Let's look at it. It's an interesting real seat configuration. Lifelong Willamette fisherman Dave Nell says the latest river study won't change his fish eating habits. Personally, I probably eat fish. Oh, maybe once, maybe twice a month out of the Willamette at the most. But a new DEQ study says at the very least, anyone eating certain fish along this 45-mile stretch of the Willamette doubles their chances of developing cancer. The risk numbers are high. Studying fish like these, scientists found smallmouth bass, sucker fish, pike, and carp loaded with cancer-causing toxins. Then he's got like a parasite going right there. I think occasional meals 
would be fine, but I wouldn't make a steady diet out of it. Oh, he's a little skinny and sickly looking. A steady diet or 16 meals a month that include fish from this river increases long-term cancer risks nearly 20-fold. I don't think it's going to change people's habits fishing the Willamette. And there's your largemouth. Now says most of the fish in the study like this smallmouth bass end up on the wall or back in the river. Down here you've got your more serious anglers or generally, you know, your catch and release fishermen. But those deformed fish disturb him. Something that needs correcting. And he's concerned about all the toxins in the river. Where is it all coming from? The mills? industry. It's better than, a, I think, Imperial. That feels a disappointing picture, yes, but all. one that won't make him hang up his rod. Uh, that's very nice. And what is next in the process? Well, DEQ will look at pinpointing the problem. Is it construction crews churning up toxins that are flowing into the river? Is it farmers who are doing the same thing and churning up uh, deadly uh, toxins that have been there for years and are resurfaced when they farm their fields? Are those going into the river? Those are a couple of things that DEQ will look to study next. But that funding for this study will have to come from the legislature, and that's what has environmentalists concerned. Will that funding appear, Joe? Live downtown, John Becker, thanks. Some of the brightest and most creative minds in the technology world came together in Portland tonight. It's the 2000 Technology Awards. Big honors for some of the best local companies in the world of technology. Things like Internet Company of the Year and Product of the Year. The guy next to me, News Channel 8's Joe Donlan, served as host for this event, which is a fundraiser for the Boy Scouts of America. Local animator Will Vinton was honored as Technology Executive of the Year this evening. And to express themselves. As a tool in the hands of creative people, technology elevates what we do and elevates who we are as human beings. And I'm pleased to be a part of that evolution. Thank you very much. We'll have more on the Technology Awards tomorrow in Your Money, Your Business on News Channel 8 at 6.30. Looks like a terrific evening. An impressive group assembled. Mm -hmm. And a good place to get a good stock tip, too. <laughs> tell, us, tell us what it was. <laughs> More tomorrow night okay. on Your Money, Your Business. Just when you thought you heard the last of Monica Lewinsky, she's back. Coming up on News Channel 8, she's being called on to tell her side of the story one more time. Plus, more trouble for O.J. Simpson. We'll tell you why police want to talk with him this time. And he's not your average, everyday Beaver fan. In fact, he's the mayor of Eugene. And it was another fantastic day around here with lots of blue sky. But how long this, can this continue, especially when some places in the Northwest, it was socked in with fog? We'll talk about this, plus dangerously cold wind chill in part of the valley tonight. That's coming up with your forecast. How are you weathering the shopping season? Keep cool. Car Toys Christmas Sale makes it easy to get the hottest deals. Only Car Toys has AT&T Wireless, Sprint PCS, Voice Stream, Nextel, Quest, and Verizon Wireless. For just $25 each a month, get free unlimited calling between two family members and 300 shared local minutes with service provided by Verizon Wireless. And when you get two phones from Car Toys, get gift checks worth $100, bucks, plus a free scooter. For the coolest selection at the hottest prices, zip into Car Toys. Car Toys. Introducing the all-new Chevy Tahoe. Now offering a third row of seats that's light and easier to handle than anything else out there. It's nowhere near anything. The new Chevy Tahoe. Like a rock. It's the time of year for all of us to feel closer. And that's just what Verizon Wireless is here for. Our family share plan has free unlimited calling between family members, free long distance, and 300 share digital minutes for $25 a month per line. Plus, get two digital phones for the price of one. Hurry to a Verizon Wireless communication store near you or call 1-866-2-JOIN-IN. Verizon Wireless. Join in. The Declaration of Independence promises Americans the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. But often overlooked is the right to really yummy chicken fingers. Arby's chicken fingers, made with strips of real chicken breast so they're tender and juicy with a special crunchy coating and really tasty dipping sauces. We wonder which of our founding fathers we have to thank for this. Why settle for bland nuggets when you can have Arby's great tasting chicken fingers? Satisfy your grown-up tastes. Now, back to Joe Donlan and Laurel Porter on Northwest News Channel 8. 
Monica Lewinsky may have to answer more questions about her affair with President Clinton. That tops our look at news beyond the Northwest tonight. Independent counsel Robert Ray wants to interview the former intern. It's all part of the perjury and obstruction probe of President Clinton. Ray says a decision on whether to prosecute the president will come after he leaves office in January. Ray's office says Lewinsky is reluctant to do the interview, but because of her immunity agreement, she is required to cooperate. Former President George Bush is recovering tonight from hip replacement surgery. Doctors here at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota, say the surgery was successful. Former First Lady Barbara Bush had total hip replacement at the same clinic in December of 1997. Mr. Bush is now 76 years old, and he captured worldwide attention doing this in 1997 and 1999, skydiving. And now with a new hip, he says he's looking forward to jumping again in 2004 to celebrate his 80th birthday. The electrical connections are complete around the International Space Station Alpha. Power generated from the newly installed solar wings will feed the rest of the station quite a sight. The panels turn sunlight into electricity. The $600 million set of solar wings is the largest, most expensive item ever built for a spacecraft. Police in Miami, Florida are investigating a possible case of road rage involving O.J. Simpson. A police report says Simpson got out of his car when another motorist flashed his lights at him. Simpson then went up to the car and got into a verbal argument with the other driver. Police say Simpson scratched the man's face and then left the scene. So far, no charges have been filed. Simpson denies ever touching the other driver. Beaver fever is reaching far and wide. Coming up here on News Channel 8, we'll tell you why the mayor of Eugene has changed his colors. And the big game for the Portland Pilots basketball team. Colin has the highlights coming up in sports. Thanks for making News Channel 8 number one at sunrise, number one at 5, and number one at 11. Most watched, most honored, Northwest News Channel 8. Where the news comes first. In an emergency, only Country Companies Insurance gives you immediate advice from a claims authority, and we're the only company that guarantees it. Country Companies Insurance. Real people, real answers, real quick. Do you need this much space to feel comfortable? Do you need to feel the breeze on your face? Is taking a nap really the best use of your time? The most spacious, most luxurious sedan we've ever created. Do you need this much space to feel comfortable? It says nanny service on my front door, but really, I'm in the trust business. When I opened in 93, I went with the people I knew I could trust with my business, Dex. They guided me to the best mix of yellow page and internet directories. And I know that I'll always have access to the latest ways to connect with my customers. Nannies and families trust my service. And I trust Dex. Build your business every day with Dex. This News Channel segment is brought to you by Meyer and Frank. This is where it gets good. The holiday customer appreciation sale is going on now at Meyer and Frank. We're saying thanks to our most valued customers. Use your Meyer and Frank charge and take an extra 15% off every sale and clearance purchase. Find the best brands in every department, plus 50% off specials, and save an extra 15% when you use your Meyer and Frank charge. We've got the gifts. We've got the gifts. We've got the gifts. The holiday customer appreciation sale at Meyer and Frank. We've got the gifts. From the First Alert Storm Team, this is Bruce Sussman with News Channel 8 Weather. Yeah, Matt got Laurel's cold, apparently. <laughs> so no, Bruce you're is spreading in. terrible rumors. Yeah. I you didn't start what? that. Actually, tonight at 6 o'clock, I think both Joe and Tracy we agreed you started it. <laughs> they dissed yeah. me behind my back. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Just don't be the first one to get sick, because exactly. then everyone blames you. I'll never you. hear the end of it. That's right, and <laughs> lots of people are sick in the newsroom, including Matt. I think he'll be back tomorrow. But I tell you, I am certainly not sick of this weather. Hopefully you aren't either. Beautiful sunset this afternoon from our Rose City Cam. This is our Sky Show. As the sun set just behind the West Hills about 4 o'clock. Now, for those of you west of the West Hills, 
Sunset was more like 4.30 in places like Tigard and uh, also over in Beaverton. Outside tonight, things have really cooled off as the sun is gone. A Rose City cam, you can see all the city lights. And 40 degrees right now, according to our Instant Weather Network. Uh, that's in downtown Portland. And by the way, downtown Portland, one of the warmest places around at this hour. Take a look at our Sky Tracker's temperatures right now. Already at the freezing mark for those of you in Vancouver. Hillsboro's at 30 right now. And Scappoose, well, you'll be hitting freezing before too long. You're at 33 degrees. Now, on top of these cold temperatures, we also have some gusty east winds to tell you about out near Troutdale and Gresham in the mouth of the Columbia River Gorge. Of course, if this is where you are, you already know about those gusty winds. So far, wind gusts tonight to 43 miles an hour. And check out the worst wind chill down to 11 degrees. And that was about an hour ago. I suspect by morning we could possibly see some wind chill in the single digits. And these gusty winds, by the way, they will continue near the gorge for much of tomorrow. So bundle up as you head off to work or school in the morning. Meanwhile, let's take a look at what else is going on on our Pacific satellite. We'll fly up over Oregon and Washington for your Wednesday, more sunshine. It is going to be a beauty around here. But notice all these clouds down here. Well, this is one area where we're not going to see a lot of sunshine. Parts of eastern Washington, northeastern Oregon, and even parts of Idaho where things were socked in today. In fact, in Boise, things were so bad, they had to close the airport for a while. They had some freezing fog and lots of dense fog that forced flight delays and airport closures. It was a real mess for a couple of hours there. Also, speaking of something that is flying today. Check this out. In Kern County, California, they launched a smog balloon. What will they think of next? This smog blimp, I guess you would call it, flies around during the winter months between now and January and will actually survey pollution levels in the area. Pretty amazing stuff that they're coming up with down there in California. For us, looking beautiful. Not a lot of smog. East winds 10 miles an hour along the coast and mostly sunny. Going to be another beautiful day for those of you along the coastline. No advisories in the marine forecast. For the Willamette Valley, mostly sunny again. Some patchy morning fog to start out the day and, of course, some areas of frost around as well. Sunny for the west end of the gorge, but clouds and some fog on the east end, just like we showed you in that area along the Columbia River where things didn't really turn sunny at all today. 50 for the high in Salem, but down to around 30 tonight for a low temperature. So almost an exact repeat of what we had today. Sunny skies for the Cascades, if that's where you're headed. We could certainly use some more snow up there, but there's none in sight right now. 45 for the high at Government Camp. Central and Eastern Oregon, those of you along the Columbia River and in much of Northeastern Oregon, low clouds and fog throughout the day. Otherwise, partly cloudy skies. High temperatures mainly going to be in the 30s and 40s tomorrow. Uh, and basically, Pendleton, there'll almost be no change between tonight and tomorrow because of your clouds. In the Portland-Vancouver area, clear and cold, windy near the gorge, and tomorrow the same sort of thing, mostly sunny skies, 50 for the high, but the morning we start out around freezing, and look at Saturday, a high of 39, still in the works, we're still expecting cold air to move down from the north, but at this point, no moisture to go with it. Bundle up for that big parade on Saturday night, though. <laughs> yeah, you're you're going to have a good time out there. <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, Bruce. <laughs> the mayor of Eugene was sporting new colors today. Mayor Jim Torrey doesn't normally don the orange and black of Oregon State University, but today it was time to pay up. Torrey made a friendly little wager on the Civil War game with Corvallis Mayor Helen Berg, and as you know, OSU won that game 23-13. to Now, Berg was a gracious winner. She said Corvallis would be cheering for both the Ducks and the Beavers to win their respective bowl games. That's pretty nice. That yeah, is, and you know, the Beaver fans love Colin. They cheer oh, him yeah. all the time, and he's here to tell us now about a big upset in, upset in college basketball. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> Pilots had a soft landing tonight. The Cougars had a bumpy flight. Highlights and the story coming up next. Tonight, catch Jay with Ben Affleck, Rodney Dangerfield, Lindsay and Jody in Vegas, and Jay tries a new way to pick a president. Hey, it's better than the one we've got. Followed by Conan tonight. Here are just a few of the hundreds of decorations you can save on at Kmart. A seven and a half foot tree for just $77. Decorated wreaths for just $6.99. 100 count Westinghouse lights for $3.79. Come to the Trima Home Department at Kmart. It has everything you need to make a holiday work of art in your home or wherever else you live. Kmart. We know how to make your holidays bright. They 
they may dance, spark, even start fires. But the most frightening thing about down power lines is when they don't do anything except lie there and wait. If you see any down power line, don't touch it. Just call us at Portland General Electric. News Channel 8 has been named the best weathercast by the Associated Press for the third consecutive time. Look for Matt Safina's forecast in tomorrow's Oregonian. Long list? Freddy says gift ideas for everyone. Want something unique? Look for gift solutions. Or create your own. A Fred Meyer gift card is always welcome. What's on your holiday list today? it's never been before. Welcome back, Portland. Pilots will host number one ranked Duke on December 19th. They warmed up tonight with the Pac-10's Washington State Cougars at the Child Center. Pilots very much an international squad. Players from Mexico, France, Cameroon, Australia, and Germany. This is Carmi Oloya with a steal and a hoop. Pilots charge to a nine-point halftime lead. Philip Dijorak then hit a tough turnaround jumper on the baseline. Scoring balance tonight, everybody contributes. Pilots only trailed once at three to two, but they didn't put it away until the very end of the night, but eventually they upset the coup, 70 to 66. Anytime you have a chance to beat a Pac-10 team on your home floor and you get them here, you want to take advantage of the opportunity. I thought we played a really good basketball game, especially the defensive end. We had a lot of practice in close games. So um, we're just going to keep working and hope it's going to be a good starting point because we feel we can do a lot of things this year. Meantime, the Toronto Raptors come to Portland tomorrow night, but they went into the record books tonight. They'll be the team Carl Malone became the second leading scorer in league history against. 31 for Carl, surpassing Wilt Chamberlain as the league's second all-time point producer. One thing overlooked with Malone, his loyalty. 16 years with the same team. You don't see that much. Malone and the Jazz hammer the Raptors. 98 to 84, the only downside. Malone ejected with a minute left. Keep that part out of the record, Brooks, I think. Highlight reel tonight in L.A. Kobe Bryant, 36 for the Lakers. Here's the flying whammo. He and Allen Iverson trade moves. J.R. Ryder, check it out, takes a stab at guarding Iverson. Well, J.R. gets a little dizzy and decides to call it quits. Iverson <laughs> put on a ball-handling clinic. Lakers used a big fourth to seal it. Philly started the season 10-0, but they did it against the weaker teams from the East. The Western road swing should be a reality check. Lakers win at 96-85. Shaq and Kobe, no question the difference in the fourth. Sacramento hosting San Antonio tonight. Kings live and die with their offense, and Chris Webber from Jason Williams racked up 30 tonight. You don't find many teams in pro sports that have as much fun as Sacramento does. It's like they're playing a game of gym rat. This is at the end of the first. Bingo. But tonight, credit their defense. Kept the Spurs without a field goal for the final eight minutes. Weber with a big bucket. 81-75, Kings win, and they won it down the stretch, a place they've gagged a few games away in the past couple of years. Good for them. Fun team to watch, and former Blazer coach Rick Adelman leading them there. Houston, Indiana win tonight. Miami and Orlando pick up W's. Minnesota over the Bulls. Cleveland beat Charlotte. Vancouver over Detroit. Goal tonight from Jersey's John Madden. Can't find a teammate, so he ricochets the puck off Colorado's Patrick Waugh. Patrick Waugh has been had. Madden stealing a play that was often used by the great Marquette hockey teams, captained by our Joe Donnelly. Boy, I, those were some great moments in sports. How bad is it for USC in their search for a football coach? One report says Mike Riley's the main man, but Riley denies even talking to USC. If he turns it down, it'll mean that Oregon State's current coach and former coach have said no, and the Ducks' current coach, Mike Bellotti, didn't want the gig either. They're really running out of time here. They are. They're the options. Yeah, they are. And, you know, some of the NFL coaches have been fired, but nobody really wants to hire 
the fired guy. So they're in trouble. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. I want to see that hockey play. <laughs> we'll be right back. So what do you have for us tomorrow morning? Really cold again? Yes, really cold and definitely some frost on your windshield if you park outside. We're going to start at 32 in Portland, but some places will be in the 20s. And I do want to mention the wind chill again for eastern Multnomah County in the teens and even single digits tomorrow morning. I'll tell you, it was cold this morning walking my kids to school. You needed that stocking cap. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great night. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thanks for watching the area's number one 11 o'clock news. Northwest News Channel 8, where the news comes first. Doctor, with the results of my blood test. Bring everyone together. I have a tumor. An unforgettable <laughs> new episode of The Street, next Wednesday on Fox. Now, Fox 49.